Here is your latest African news. South Africa. South Africa to ban breeding and hunting of lions in captivity. South Africa on Sunday revealed plans to ban the breeding of lions in captivity for trophy hunting or for tourists to pet, advocating a more authentic experience for visitors. The decision was made in response to recommendations contained in a government study into this controversial practice. The decision, which is yet to be formulated into policy, is likely to set governments on a collision course with the powerful multi-million dollar industry of captive lion breeding. Nigeria. Lagos government begins constructing the biggest children's hospital in sub-Saharan Africa. Governor Babajide Sanwo'olu of Lagos is flagged off the construction of Massey Children's Hospital, a 150-bed specialist hospital for children in Lagos. Mr. Sanwo'olu said the hospital, one of the achievements of his administration, will be the biggest children's hospital in sub-Saharan Africa when it's completed. The governor said this at the opening and groundbreaking ceremony of the Massey Children's Hospital on Wednesday. Africa-wide, green gold, avocado farming on the rise in Africa. The so-called green gold is rapidly gaining popularity on the African continent. Both Nigeria and Uganda aim to drastically increase their avocado production and become top exporters in the next decade. Kenya is already among the global top 10. Export revenues in the East African country surged by a third between 2019 and 2020. Farmers are hailing the crop as an antidote to poverty in rural areas. Niger. President Mohamed Bazoum makes education reform a priority. The new Nigerian president, Bazoum Mohamed, has made school education his priority and has outlined his vision for the upcoming years to sector partners. The head of state has a project to upgrade the educator's body teachers, as he recently stated before teaching establishment partners. He also emphasizes on professionalization and capacity building of the teaching profession as being key to a successful education reform plan. Africa-wide data protection. Can Africa salvage its digital sovereignty? By opening up the telecommunications and internet sectors to private investors, African governments have given them the upper hand in the lucrative data market. If the African continent is to regain control of its digital economy, countries need to rethink taxes and regulatory policies, analysts argue. The critical infrastructure, namely submarine cables, terrestrial fiber optic networks, and data centers needed to ensure the content's connectivity and the growth of a full-fledged digital economy are mostly owned by international companies currently. Somalia. Elections to hold as President Farmajo drops term extension. Somalia's President Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed Farmajo on Saturday reopened talks to hold elections as soon as is possible, a move welcomed by the opposition and raising the specter of further deadly violence. In a short speech to MPs broadcast live on television, the president called for a negotiated solution on the ongoing political crisis, abandoning the two-year extension of his presidential term adopted on the 12th of April. Nigeria. Nigerian teen gets 19 scholarship offers worth more than $5 million from the US and Canada. Victory Ying Kobajo, a 17-year-old high school graduate, was offered more than $5 million worth of scholarship money for an undergraduate program of study, according to admission documents and estimates of financial aid awards. Victory was given potential full scholarship from Ivy League schools such as Yale College, Princeton University, Harvard College, and Brown University. Tanzania. 
Tanzania's new president, Samia Suluhu Hassan, began a two-day state visit to Kenya on the invitation of President Uhuru Kenyatta as the two countries are set to sit for bilateral talks. This is the first meeting between the two countries since the death of President John Pombe Magufuli. South Africa South Africa receives the first batch of Pfizer jabs. More than 325,000 doses of the Pfizer jab arrived at Johannesburg's O.R. Tambo International Airport. The country expects to receive close to 4.5 million doses of the two-shot vaccine by the end of June. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine has been the only shot being administered in the country since the suspension of the AstraZeneca vaccine in February. Burundi. Burundi shows promising media freedom. Burundi joined the world on Monday, May the 3rd to celebrate International Press Freedom Day. Media professionals gathered at the Bujumbura Press House for this particular day. The new president, Evariste Ndaishimie, has in recent months showed the willingness of the government to allow press freedom. Burundi has made major steps to ensure that media rights were in place since the administration came to power. Libya. Libya's top diplomat calls on Turkey to withdraw foreign fighters. Libya's top diplomat Monday called for the departure of foreign forces and mercenaries from the North African country as it heads towards elections later on this year. The foreign minister of Libya's interim government urged Turkey to implement UN Security Council resolutions demanding the repatriation of more than 20,000 foreign fighters and mercenaries from Libya. Rwanda French troops set to avoid a trial over Rwanda massacre. Members of the French armed forces deployed in Rwanda during the 1994 genocide were set on Monday to avoid any trial after prosecutors recommended the judges drop a case accusing them of complicity in crimes against humanity over their inaction in a massacre. The call to drop the 15-year-old case followed a major report in March examining allegations about France's role in the genocide. Tunisia. Tunisia to seek $4 billion loan from the International Monetary Fund. Tunisia will seek a $4 billion loan program from the IMF in talks that are due to start next week. Prime Minister Hishem Mechechi stated that politicians faced a lost opportunity to save the economy. DRC and Zambia. Is copper Africa's new oil? Copper is currently trading at around $9,500 per tonne in London, which is already its highest price in a decade. A year ago in April, it was selling at below $5,000 per tonne. The transition to a low carbon economy cannot happen without copper which is both a key electrical conductor, far more efficient than other metals such as aluminium and a crucial component for solar and wind power plants, electrical vehicles and even batteries, as well as energy efficient buildings. Africa wide, latest COVID-19 statistics from across African countries. As of May 4, confirmed cases of COVID-19 from 55 African countries reached 4,578,852. Reports of deaths in Africa reached 122,554, while 4,093,000 people have recovered and 12,401,000 vaccinations have been administered. Nigeria. Nigeria's army vows to support Buhari amid calls to resign. The Nigerian army on Monday expressed its support for President Mohamadi Buhari, who has been criticized from all sides from, for his inability to curb insecurity in the country, categorically dismissing any likelihood of a coup. In a statement issued late Monday night, the Nigerian armed forces said that they would continue to support the government despite the poor security situation and sustained criticism of Buhari, a 78-year-old former general. South Sudan. Primary and secondary schools across South Sudan reopened on Monday, a little more than one year after they were closed in an effort to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Hussein Abdelbagi, head of the South Sudan Task Force on COVID-19, 
urged teachers and students to continue social distancing and adhere to all other preventative guidelines as they return to classrooms. Tanzania. Tanzania starts refining gold to international standards. Bank of Tanzania Governor Prof. Florence Luoga has commended the state mining corporation, Stamico, for enabling Tanzania to start refining gold to international standards, urging the refinery to acquire accreditation certificates to enable the bank to stop buying refined gold as part of its foreign reserve. The envisaged dream for Tanzania to stop exporting raw gold is certainly coming true, Prof. Luoga said. Zimbabwe. Diasporans break record remit 1 billion US dollars in 2020. Zimbabweans in the diaspora last year sent home a total of 1 billion US dollars, the highest ever contribution made to the local economy. Addressing journalists in Bulawayo over the last weekend, Finance Minister Mtuli Ngube revealed that diaspora remittances have since overtaken foreign aid to Zimbabwe. Ngube said the remittances surpassed the previous year's amount of 635.7 million US dollars. Africa-wide, how responsible business boosts the agricultural sector. Responsible businesses conduct, conduct is a hot topic of global conversation, and FAO has been at the center of this discourse in agriculture for several years. In 2016, FAO and the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, launched the OECD FAO guidance for responsible agricultural supply chains, a global standard for addressing risk and developments in the agricultural sector. A growing number of governments around the world have since been incorporating the OECD FAO guidance into their corporate sustainability policies, linking together investment, enterprise, agriculture and development. Kenya. Women in Kenya raise concerns over missing periods after COVID-19 jab. More than 85 women in Kenya have come forward claiming that their menstrual flow either came away earlier than expected or was yet to show up about three weeks after they received the AstraZeneca jab. This comes after global experts said more research is needed to continuously understand the vaccine's impact on women's bodies. The women fear the vaccine could have altered their menstrual cycles and want to know why this occurrence has not been listed among AstraZeneca's vaccine side effects. Kenya, a cave site in Kenya's forests reveals the oldest human burial sites in Africa. Scientists have found the oldest known human burial sites in Africa dating to about 78,000 years ago at a cave site called Panga Yasaidi near the Kenyan coast. The remains of a child who was between two and a half and three years old laid to rest with the pillow were found in the cave. The discovery, researchers said, sheds light on the development of early complex social behaviors in Homo sapiens. South Africa. Mourners pay tribute to South Africa's late regent queen. Mourners in traditional leopard skin regalia on Wednesday gathered outside a Johannesburg morgue to accompany the body of the late Zulu regent queen on the eve of her funeral. The 65-year-old queen, Shiwe Manfombi Lamini Zulu, died on April 30th, weeks after she was named interim successor to her late husband, King Goodwill Zuelitini, the longest serving leader of South Africa's largest ethnic group. East Africa, Kenya, Tanzania agree on plans for gas pipeline. During the first visit by Tanzania's new president, Samia Suluhu Hassan, to Kenya, she and her counterpart, President Uhuru Kenyatta, pledged to enhance diplomatic ties. Among the top agenda is the long-awaited plan to build a 600-kilometer cross-border gas pipeline connecting the coastal cities of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania and Mombasa in Kenya and visa-free trading for businesses. Mali. Malian woman gives birth to nine babies, breaking a world record. A 25-year-old Malian woman has given birth to nine babies, two more than doctors had detected during her scans. Halima Sise gave birth to the non-nuplets in Morocco. 
Mali's government flew her there for specialist care. A woman who had eight babies in the United States in 2009 holds the Guinness World Record for the most children delivered at a single birth to survive, but Halima has now unseated this particular record. Ghana. Ghanaian Afrobeats stamping the global music scene with unique flavor. Although today's new wave Afrobeats music scene has been strongly dominated by West African giant Nigeria, where in the 1970s it originated and became popular via uh, Fela Kuti, neighboring sister country Ghana has been steadily emerging, and not just in Accra's clubs, but on a huge international market beyond the motherland's borders. Afrobeats festivals are gaining momentum in Europe as it blends both traditional African music with a modern electric pop. Malawi, rising concern as Lake Malawi turns green. Malawians have expressed concern after the water in Lake Malawi turned green in a rare phenomenon. Forestry and Natural Resources Minister Nancy Tembo has explained that the greening is as a result of a bloom in toxic algae that occurred after heavy rains and wind mixed with the nutrients found at the bottom of the lake. The fisheries department has warned fishermen against fishing on the lake, saying that it could be harmful. Rwanda outrage over call to shelve Rwandan genocide case against the French military. Survivors and human rights groups have criticized a recommendation by prosecutors in France to drop a 15-year case accusing senior French military officials of complicity in the 1994 Rwandan genocide. French military commanders became the subject of criminal investigation into complicity in genocide in December 2005 after complaints filed by survivors and human rights groups. Central African Republic Russian mercenaries accused of rights violations in Central African Republic. UN experts reported on serious human rights violations, allegedly committed by Russian security companies, including mass shootings, arbitrary arrests, torture, and attacks on civilian facilities. Moscow officially gives the number of Russian military experts in CAR at 535, but according to press reports, the actual number is much, much higher. The Wagner Group alone, a private security company from Russia, employs over 1,000 people in the Central African Republic. Africa-wide, is it time for the USA to pay reparations for slavery? The House Judiciary Committee voted on April 14th, 2021 to recommend the creation of a commission to study the possibility of paying reparations to the descendants of enslaved people in the United States. Through slavery and colonial rule, Africa lost its people, but the continent also lost skilled labor, creativity and innovations. Those benefits were transferred to colonial societies and their recovery remains at stake for Africa and African descended people worldwide. Somalia. Somalia restores diplomatic ties with Kenya. Somalia said on Thursday it was restoring diplomatic relations with neighboring Kenya almost six months after severing those ties, accusing Nairobi of meddling in their politics. Relations between the countries have also been tense over the ownership of potential oil and gas deposits, some of which lie off the coast of Jubaland, one of Somalia's five semi-autonomous states. Deputy Information Minister Abdirahman Yusuf told a news conference in Mogadishu yesterday that diplomatic relationships have been restored between the two states. Tanzania Joy as government abolishes charges on higher education loans. Higher education students now have a reason to smile after the government decided to scrap some of the nuisance charges on their education loans. Education, Science and Technology Minister Joyce Ndalichako said the government was implementing President Samia Tsuluhu Hassan's directive on higher education loans. Starting July 1st, she said the 6% charge in value retention to higher education loans beneficiaries will be scrapped. Cameroon. 
Startup creates soil analysis kit for farming efficiency. Cameroon's agricultural sector employs the majority of the country's workers, but too many know too little about the soil, resulting in inefficient farming. To help Cameroon's farmers, a computer engineer created an electronic analysis kit to test soil quality and the suitability for crops. Technology startup Clinic Agro created a kit with a mobile application called Clinic Soul for instant soil testing. The kit was invented to help farmers who were losing money. Tanzania. Turning point is Tanzania's gold exports pass 3 billion US dollars mark. Tanzania's gold shipment hit 3 billion dollar mark for the first time as the price of precious metals increased in the world market. According to the Bank of Tanzania, the value of the exports of gold to 3.25 billion US dollars in the year ending March 31, 2021, compared with 2.3 billion US dollars recorded previously. Egypt, Mo Salah wins Athlete Advocate of the Year at the Laureus World Sports Award. Salah, the Egyptian who was honored with the Sporting Inspiration Award following his support for charitable causes and commitment to fighting social injustice during the last few years. He's active in the regeneration projects in Nagrig, his hometown, where the majority of the people there still live in poverty. Thank you so much for watching. Visit our YouTube channel Tuna Cheki to watch the full news report and our website at tunacheki.tv for all of your latest African news updates. You can directly support this news series by becoming our YouTube member or even becoming a patron. And remember, Africa is watching. And please feel free to leave your suggestions, news tips or topics about Africa that you'd like us to explore.